Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Ansible's built-in debugger. Today, I'm gonna to show you what this tool is, how to use it to debug your tasks and your Ansible playbooks, and some of the main key features and options that you can use within it. So if you didn't know, Ansible provides you with this inbuilt debugging tool. So it's slightly similar to Python's PDB in the fact that you can use it to step through different parts of your code and at each point then print out your variables to help you debug your, well, in our case, Ansible tasks or playbooks. Let's jump into the terminal where I can just show you some of the main features of this tool. So first of all, nothing needs to be installed. It's installed by default. And what I've got here, I've just got a really simple Ansible setup where I've got a simple playbook just to create some interfaces from some data that we're going to pull in from our host files here. So nice and simple. But what I've got in here, I have got an error that I've added in. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these interfaces, hit an error, and we're going to jump into this Ansible debugging tool. So when it comes to the debugger, there's three main things that we can do with it. We can print out our different variables and our arguments we can change our variables and our arguments, and then we can also then step through our execution. And it's those three areas that I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you today. So first of all, we're gonna run our playbook, but before we do, I'm just gonna mention to initiate our Ansible debugger, we can do this at a play level. We can do it at a task level if we wanted to. We could set it via an environment variable or our config file. And at the point that we set it within our task or our playbook, we can then define at what point it's actually going to be triggered. So in this case, I'm going to define that it's triggered based on a failure. You can also set it upon skipped tasks, or you can set it to always trigger, etc., etc., And all of those different options you can find within the, the documentation. So let's run our playbook and we see we get an error. So let's print out, first of all, our task name. So we can just do this like so. We could actually just use task. What P does is it pretty prints it. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we've got one line. As you go on and you start to print out larger kind of data structures, then clicking a P at the beginning is really useful and it prints it out in a nice way. So I normally just add this in by default. So we can print out our task name like so. We can also look at the task argument. So the inputs that we've given to our task, like so. So you can see here, config state, and this relates to here. But this is what we've, we've inputted in. And then we can also see our task variables like so. And if we want to step into this, this data and we want to pick some different data out, we can do just using the standard way within Python of, of selecting different keys, like so, whatever your key name might be. So that's cool. So we've got a few ways to be able to kind of see the different variables, et cetera, and what's, what's going on. Now, from our arguments, we could see that we are getting in add, like so. And so if we have a look to see what's in our host files, we can see that it should be this. So let's change our task argument. Let's change what we've actually supplied into our task like so. And we can do this by just specifying our task and do task.args. And then we can specify what we want to update. In this case, we're going to update the address key and I'm going to set it to this, right? Rather than previously, it was this. So let's set this like so. Now let's now recheck what our task arguments are and we can see that this is now changed. So we can also use task bars and then we can select the key and set different keys, different values, et cetera, however we, we want to. And so now we've changed our argument to our task. Let's rerun our task. So there's two different ways that we can kind of, two main different ways that we can step through our execution. We can run the task again using redo or R, or we can actually then continue to the ne next task using continue or C. So let's rerun our task. Now we've got this, or should I say, now we've changed this input argument. And we can now see that it's looped through because we've changed that input argument, it's looped through and it's actually configured that interface on the device. But we're still getting an issue for our spine two because we've not changed that input argument. So let's have a look at our task arguments again, just to double check. And yeah, because we've not changed it 
on this this part of the execution. But what we can do is we can continue to the next, which is then going to complete the Ansible run. We can see here, so spine two has failed. And we've got our, our changes within spine one. So yeah, just a couple of, just a couple of main things that we can do with that tool. I think it's really, really useful. I wouldn't say it's got as many features as the, like the Python PDB tool, but certainly a useful little tool to have within your, your toolbox when working with Ansible. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for viewing and I'll see you soon.